Dear colleagues, before we proceed with our agenda on this afternoon, I would like to inform you that the observer delegation of Japan has requested the possibility to take the floor on relation to item 5A that was discussed before the break. Thank you for understanding. Uh, Japan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with regards to the comment made by the Republic of Korea in this morning session, Japan would like to mention that Japan has been sincerely implementing recommendations in 2015 and 2018 by the World Heritage Committee. Towards the examination of the SOC at the 44th session of the committee, Japan continues to implement our commitments made in 2015 statement and will duly submit its SOC report to the World Heritage Center. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to give uh, the floor for comment for Mrs. Rosler, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The situation is quite clear. We have a decision of the last session of the World Heritage Committee in Manama. It's decision 42.7B10, and this decision requests a report from the State Party of Japan, which is due on 1st December 2019. So the Secretariat hopes that this decision will be implemented and that we receive the report as requested. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, now we have to proceed to our next item, which is uh, 5B, the same document, uh, the same number, but uh, letter is B now. So I now invite the representative of ICOMOS to briefly present its report. Please, the floor is yours, ICOMOS. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Since this is the first time for ICOMAS to take the floor, I would like to congratulate your new election and chairmanship. ICOMAS would like to express its deepest gratitude to the State Party of Azerbaijan for the organization of this session of the World Heritage Committee and a warm welcome. I would like to present a short summary of ICOMAS activities today. ICOMAS believes that the value of the World Heritage Convention, admired by millions of people and communities all over the world, can be maintained only with services of the highest quality. ICOMOS rigorously applies the World Heritage Code of Conduct throughout the evaluation process in order to maintain the quality and integrity of its advice. For the 2019 cycle, the World Heritage Panel of ICOMOS met in November 2018 and in March 2019 in Paris. This cycle has posed a significant challenge for ICOMAS. Besides three referred back nominations, ICOMAS received 32 new nominations, which is 10 more than the last cycle. Nomination dossiers were 965 pages on average, which is almost double in size compared to the previous cycle. All panel members and more than 170 desk reviewers contributed their time, effort, and great expertise. And I think it is important to know that they worked on a pro bono basis throughout the entire process and covered their own travel expenses. The composition of the panel, its advisors, and the selection of mission experts reflected the nature of the nominated properties as well as the proportional and geographical balance. Full information on the panel, including the names of its members, is available on the Commerce website. Constructive exchanges with the nominating state parties took place between the two panels. ICOMOS would like to thank the nominating state parties for collaborating in the dialogue process. It is said, ICOMOS strongly feels that the time available under the current calendar to conduct dialogue with the state parties is far too limited. In this context, ICOMOS welcomes the currently ongoing reforms of the nomination process. ICOMOS thanks the government of Tunisia, the government of Australia, and UNESCO for the invitation to the expert meeting held in January 2019 in Tunis. ICOMAS actively participated in discussions to improve the evaluation system at its meeting, as well as the session of the ad hoc working group. 
ECOMAS also welcomes the inclusion of the discussion of the nomination process under the agenda item eight, as this is related to many fundamental and interrelated issues of the convention. ECOMAS looks forward to proactively contributing to data sharing, further discussions, and in-depth analysis, which must be a key part of the working document. The work on state of conservation, although not receiving such a high profile as nominations, remains crucial to the implementation of the convention. Now that the regular interval between SOC report is two years, we welcome the recent shift towards more dialogue with state parties, and the use of advisory missions, which are proving to offer a productive way forward at several properties. For this committee session, ECOMAS has carried out and prepared a report for 12 reactive monitoring missions, as well as 14 advisory missions at the request of the state parties. I have to say that as the number of inscribed sites has been constantly increasing, while the window for the state of conservation report is limited, the percentage of sites reviewed has been proportionally decreasing. We are noting the rise in cumulative threats resulting from incremental changes which bring into focus the need for more detailed monitoring over time. This is an area where ECOMAS considers more attention is needed. Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, ECOMAS has also committed its energy and expertise to efforts to address difficulties and challenges facing the water hedges system. To name a few of our projects, ECROM and ECOMAS jointly initiated a case study project on the recovery and reconstruction of cultural heritage in post-trauma context. By the beginning of 2020, selected and peer-reviewed case studies will be available. The ECOMAS Working Group on Climate Change and Heritage has continued to be very active and it, organized, it will organize two side events tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and will report the outcome of its work. Collaboration with IUC and ICROM has been progressed, which includes the Connecting Practice Project and the World Heritage Leadership Program, in particular, the Heritage Impact Assessment. ICOMAS has been collaborating with the UNESCO Regional Office in Bangkok and the Category 2 Center in Manama for capacity building in the regions. ICOMAS has been organizing workshops, university forum, ICOMAS University Forum, as a collaboration with universities to create innovative ideas and approaches for heritage conservation. ECOMAS reaffirms its commitment to serve the World Heritage Committee and assist it, protect and conserve all the cultural heritage of the world and transmit it to future generations. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much uh, for this report. Uh, if there are no any specific questions with that, we can uh, pass to the other report, and then uh, if there will be necessity to discuss the decision uh, itself. Okay. If so, if you don't mind, now I'm giving uh, the floor, I invite to make the report, uh, representative of ICROM, to present the report briefly. Thank you, Chairperson. I would like to express Ikram's thanks to you and the government of Azerbaijan for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to our delegation. Chairperson, Ikram is pleased to have the opportunity to say a few words about its activities in the past year in favor of the World Heritage Convention. The full report of Ikram's activity can be found in document 5B. This year, ICROM continued its role in the reactive monitoring, including one reactive monitoring mission to China and four advisory missions to Africa and the Arab states. Our participation in these missions not only helped to contribute to the better conservation at the sites involved, but it also contributed to our gaining knowledge, which helps us to better prepare our capacity building activities. We are also actively we also actively participated in the periodic reporting process, and we look forward to working with the regions that are now beginning the third cycle of periodic reporting. Taking note of, of committee decision 13A from its 39th session, ICROM was invited by ICOMOS to attend the ICOMOS World Heritage Evaluation Panel as a non-voting member. While attending the first panel in November of 2018, due to budget constraints, ICROM did not attend the second meeting of the panel in March 2019. We would 
respectively point out to the committee that given the outgoing problems with the resources of the World Heritage Fund, we have not budgeted for our participation in ICOMAS panels meetings for the next biennium. I'm particularly pleased to reiterate ICROM's commitment to its role as a focal point for capacity building activities within the convention. In the past year, the World Heritage Leadership Program, a joint program of ICROM and IUCN, implemented a new course on people, nature, and culture. This course brings a people-centered approach to conservation of culture and natural heritage properties and took place in Zambia and Victoria Falls, Mosia Tunya Transboundary World Heritage Property <coughs> shared by Zambia and Zimbabwe. In addition, we continued work on the development of online learning platforms which will provide information on approaches to management of cultural and natural heritage and include other subjects such as disaster risk management and impact assessment. World Heritage Leadership is carried out in, co in close collaboration with the World Heritage Center and ICOMAS. With the very generous financial support of the Ministries of Climate and, Environmental and Environment of Norway, the Government of Switzerland also contributes to the People, Nature, Culture course, and I also like to take the opportunity to thank the Government of Korea for their new contribution to World Heritage Leadership. I would request other states parties with an interest in capacity building to become partners in this program. ICROM has further continued to collaborate with both Category 2 centers and universities around the world on capacity building activities. I would highlight a new program currently being developed in collaboration with the African World Heritage Fund and the Ecolo Patrimonio Cultural in Benin uh, with, uh, and other partners to strengthen the capacity of African youth to better care for and benefit from their heritage. <clears throat> you will hear further results on capacity building in the presentation on item six later on in the meeting. I would also like to highlight the work of our office in Sharjah. You will see a photo exhibition here at the 40th <clears throat> session in Baku entitled Ikrom Medina, capacity building for integrated conservation and management of historic cities in the Arab region. This is one of the program the regional center is offering. Other activities include work on post-crisis recovery of cultural heritage, and in that context, we are pleased to be working with UNESCO <coughs> on activities in Mosul. Over the past year, the regional center has also carried out capacity building workshops in world heritage topics in Lebanon. I would also take the opportunity to mention that ICROM and the other advisory bodies, as we have in the past, will be holding a series of side events during this session in the AB space. We have already carried two of these activities this morning. I specifically call your attention to a side event which will happen on Wednesday, which will also highlight the results of the Site Managers Forum, an activity that we are pleased to co-organize along with the World Heritage Center and the Government of Azerbaijan. I invite everyone with an interest to join us for this event and exhibition. Finally, I would like to ensure the committee that even given the budgetary pressures currently being faced, ICROM takes seriously its ongoing commitment to ensure the highest quality advisory services to the committee, state parties, and other parties. We must work together to protect the credibility of the convention so as to ensure that the heritage of outstanding universal value is transmitted to future generations. I pledge ICROM's continued commitment to achieve this goal. Thank you again, Chairperson, <coughs> for the opportunity to present ICROM's activity <coughs> to the World Heritage Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this presentation. Uh, I think there are no special comments here, and we are moving to the other report, which will be done by representative of IUCN. Please, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, 
Uh, as this is IECN's uh, first intervention at the committee, uh, may we also congratulate you on your election uh, and express our thanks to the Republic of Azerbaijan for its generous hosting of this session of the committee and for the uh, stunning opening ceremony that we all enjoyed uh, yesterday evening. Uh, Mr. Chair, IUCN's report is before the committee, uh, so I will not repeat the content uh, which is there. However, uh, please allow me to focus on a few important points. Uh, first, IUCN believes we must find more synthetic, strategic and innovative ways to deal with growing threats to world heritage. We know that natural world heritage sites shoulder a proportionally higher burden of threat. They account for nearly one third of properties on the danger list. IUCN's independent World Heritage Outlook, which was last updated in 2017 and will be updated again in 2020, dramatically illustrates the increasing number, pace and extent of threats to natural world heritage. At this session, we will again hear of increasing impacts from climate change, invasive species, major infrastructure development and excessive tourism. These are places under stress, especially so from external pressures that are often cumulative. In some cases, we are witnessing a disturbing trend that almost any development is appropriate within a World Heritage Site and that any impact can somehow be mitigated. We need to make a better use of item seven to move beyond cataloguing the threats to become much more action oriented. But we need to retain our site focus as each case is different. Here, IUCN is increasingly using uh, World Heritage Outlook uh, as a catalyst for conservation action planning on the ground and the World Heritage Leadership Initiative, which was mentioned by my ICROM colleague, uh, is uh, uh, an initiative that is driving a much more integrated biocultural approach. Uh, second is the question of reform. Uh, we must be bold and far reaching if we are to keep the convention healthy. Credibility and balance are different issues and require different approaches. We remain committed to dialogue and providing quality advice to the committee such, the decisions, such that decisions are informed based on sound science and in compliance with the operational guidelines. An integrated set of operationalized and fully costed reforms is needed to address the mismatch between expectations and resources. We continue to deliver, but we need to take stock of exactly what it costs to run this convention in the 21st century if we are to realize its promise. Mr. Chair, IUCN last, celebrated, uh, last year celebrated its 70th anniversary and as an intergovernmental organisation is now working across its diverse network of membership from state and civil society and experts toward the defining moment that is 2020. The two leading UN intergovernmental reports on nature and climate command our attention. The 2018 IPCC report on global warming of 1.5 degrees C and the 2019 IPBES Global Biodiversity Assessment, which we have heard about already this morning, make for sobering reading. These are the most comprehensive assessments ever made and they are telling us in very frank, strong language that we have limited time to react to these two accelerating and closely linked crises. Nature is declining globally at rates unprecedented in human history. As IPBES reminds us, the health of ecosystems on which we and all other species depend is deteriorating more rapidly than ever, eroding economies, livelihoods, food security, health and quality of life worldwide. The good news is that both reports come with solutions to deliver the transformative change that we must together achieve for people and planet. IUCN has for seven decades championed the fact that nature is not an optional extra but underpins all of human development, including the richness of our collective heritage. The world, her uh, the world will set new targets for nature beyond 2020 next year, and IUCN believes the World Heritage Convention has a pivotal role to play. IUCN believes that it is time to work towards a transformational unified action plan for nature. We strongly believe that it is necessary for the post-2020 global biodiversity framework to integrate not only the objectives of the CBD, but also the other two Rio conventions and the biodiversity related conventions, including this World Heritage Convention. IUCN will work to integrate World Heritage specific elements into the post-2020 framework and look to position nature's most outstanding places at the, as the litmus test for whether we are achieving nature-based solutions to the world's challenges. IUCN urges the committee and all states parties to commit to meeting this challenge. 
It is in this context that IUCN is, is pleased to announce it will stage its next major World Conservation Congress in June 2020 in Marseille, France. This Congress will shape decisions on the future of nature and be an important stepping stone to CBD COP15 in Kunming, China, November 2020. President Macron of France is making the IUCN Congress a major part of France's efforts to galvanize global momentum for nature, and we hope that you will make it a priority for your efforts as well. Mr. Chair, IUCN is committed to working with the wider World Heritage family across all these areas, and we reiterate our pledge of nearly half a century to continue to provide the highest standard of advice to the committee. We look forward to playing our part in a productive 43rd session under your guidance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. So, uh, any comments, any questions, specific questions? I don't see any. Uh, uh, no, Kuwait. Uh, Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I would like to thank the three advisory boards for their great report and their uh, continuous effort to improve the evaluation process and the work for this committee. But I also would like to see, uh, Mr. Chair, the report for the future, uh, as we discussed in the previous meetings and the different uh, ad hoc group meetings, is to see the number of experts in different regions and to have uh, in the report a KPI, the key performance indicator, number of experts from different regions, especially from the region where we have lack of experts, not just the number, but also the expertise. And I know, uh, hearing from the, uh, from the advisory board, and there is always, you know, a constraint, financial constraints, to improve this database, and uh, to show good gestures, and the state of Kuwait trying to help to overcome these obstacles, uh, we will, you know, happily, with working with the World Heritage Center, is to donate 10,000 euro for the Arab region and 10,000 euro for the African region to improve their capacity building for new experts, not just the number, but also the area of expertise. So hopefully, you know, this will help them, and we have, we see that uh, indicator on that information in the next uh, report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other proposals? Uh, bef no, before that, it was the other one. Tanzania. Tanzania, please. Well, thank you, Chair. Tanzania also notes with appreciation the detailed report by the advisory bodies on various activities that were carried out during the reporting period. Nevertheless, we also note that the report uh, overwhelmingly activity-based. Uh, they are simply a narration of what was done as opposed to the achievements. This makes it difficult, Chairperson, for us to gauge any achievements that have been attained at a scale that is commensurate with strategic objectives, making it difficult to gauge success over the longer term. My delegation is therefore of the opinion that the advisory bodies should consider improving the reporting so as to conform to strategic level achievement. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Hungary, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to start by expressing our sincere appreciation to all the advisory bodies for their important work. Their role is central and essential to the implementation of the World Heritage Convention and thus to the protection of World Heritage. Due to the little time we have, I would only like to concentrate my comments on uh, one aspect. There was a reference in the reports and even now in the, the oral presentations by all um, advisory bodies to the ongoing discussion on the reform of the nomination and evaluation process, uh, which has happened in the framework of the um, ad hoc working group and also the Tunis expert meeting. And uh, as members of the, the ad hoc working group, we just wanted to take this opportunity again to acknowledge how valuable it was to have the advisory bodies following the deliberations in a 
very constructive spirit throughout this whole process and that we think that if we are to have <clears throat> a real reform that further enhances the dialogue between the states parties and the advisory bodies, we can only do it by working all together. So we welcome very much the uh, positive attitude uh, that we have uh, seen expressed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now the floor is going to Brazil. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I would like, uh, first of all, to say how grateful we are for the presentation of the report on the activities of the advisory bodies and their um, activities since the 42nd second session of the committee. The work of the advisory bodies is extremely important to provide the technical support necessary for the presentation and evaluation of nominations to the World Heritage List, as well as to ensure that adequate measures are taken for the preservation of sites already included in the list. In this sense, we would like to draw attention to the importance of increased dialogue between the advisory bodies and the state parties at different stages of the nomination process and of the evaluation of the state of conservation of properties uh, in the list. The proposal for the creation of a new phase in the nomination process with the concept of preliminary access that has been developed in the ad hoc working group is a relevant step in this direction. We would also like to favor the importance of uh, expanding the geographical basis of the group of experts that integrate the advisory bodies in order to have a more, more pluralistic approach uh, to evaluations. And finally, we would also welcome the continued collaboration of ICROM and IUCN and ICOMOS in particular in the implementation of the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Azerbaijan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My delegation would like also to join previous speakers to commend the work of the advisory bodies and to thank for their activities reflected in the report. It's indeed of crucial importance of what they're doing, but and there are some uh, issues that need to be improved and there are shortcomings and my delegation just would like to point out those elements that we believe that it will serve for better uh, the cooperation between the advisory bodies and state parties. The first issue is the lack of dialogue. This is a very important issue and we were discussing this for over and over in this committee that the advisory bodies and the state parties need more dialogue to understand the requirements to better know what, what are the re requirements and what, is, uh, what, what are the information is needed uh, from the advisory bodies. And still, we believe that here uh, that, that there are some shortcomings that need to be addressed uh, by the advisory bodies. The second very important point is the capacity building. The capacity building is a very uh, powerful tool to to, to, to help the state parties to understand the requirements and the standards uh, that of, the, of, the, of the convention. And here, uh, it's not only about the, the capacity building for the conservation and uh, the preservation uh, of the sites, but also to the nomination, in the nomination process, especially given the, the, the lack of a nomination from certain regions uh, uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, then, uh, the most, the one of the most important issues is the credibility. We always talk about the credibility of the convention, but we believe that the credibility depends uh, also on, on the advisory bodies. It starts from the evaluation process and it goes uh, to the, the, the committee uh, debates. So we have to understand that there is a shared responsibility on the credibility. And the last but not least is a methodology. We really believe that the methodology that existing for so many years are, needs to be improved in a way 
it will bring more transparency and more uh, predictability in terms of uh, the experts participating in this process. And uh, here I would like to concur what has been said uh, by the delegation of Ambassador of Kuwait and supported by the Ambassador of Brazil, that we have to have a more balanced, geographically balanced uh, list of experts. And uh, here it will bring more, uh, more uh, credibility to this uh, evaluation process as well. And finally, I think all those issues are very much debated in the ad hoc uh, meetings uh, over the year, and we have certain recommendations which will address those issues. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, as soon as I don't see any other applies, uh, may I ask the rapporteur uh, if there are any... Zimbabwe, no, I saw it. It was not there. So, Zimbabwe, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Zimbabwe commends the support of the advisory bodies during the period from March 2018 to March 2019. Their advice in uh, programs and projects supporting the convention are worth noting, particularly in aspects of evaluation of nominations for properties, monitoring state of conservation of world heritage properties, research, documentation, as well as uh, capacity building initiatives. We appreciate and acknowledge the focus of the advisory bodies on the interlinkages in the management of cultural and natural heritage properties as a commendable initiative in light of historic gaps and challenges related, relating to such uh, nominations. In addition to their direct work on the convention, we want to commend the initiative by advisory bodies to mainstream world heritage issues in their own programs. For example, ECROM's program on integrating cultural heritage conservation in social, economic, urban, and environmental planning is world heritage capacity building as part of its uh, programs. The creativity driving the technical support, including the adoption of ICT in world heritage management, for example, in the development of police compendium and online handbooks is indeed commendable. We are confident that through their support, the ideal of the convention will be actively pursued and achieved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, please, uh, I would like to apply to a rapporteur whether we had some uh, amendments, some and other documents, proposals on these items. Uh, once again, we have no amendments to this decision. Thank you very much. Uh, so, if we don't have uh, any amendments and in interventions, I will declare the draft decision for the 3COM5B adopted. Thank you very much. Now we proceed to the item 5C, which is the World Heritage Convention and Sustainable Development. Uh, please refer to the document 5C in this regard. I have the pleasure to give the floor to Mrs. Hosak Grahar, Deputy Direct Director of the Center, to present to us the document. Please, Madam, the, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Um, the document 5C presents the progress made by the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies in implementing the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy since the 41st session of the committee in 2017. Next, please. The World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy was adopted by the General Assembly in 2015 
a few months after the major international agreement by all countries on the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, thus furthering policy coherence. It calls for all sites, cultural, natural, and mixed, to fully respect and help protect the outstanding universal value of the World Heritage properties, while also promoting all the dimensions of sustainable development, environmental sustainability, inclusive social development, and economic, uh, inclusive economic development, together with fostering peace and security. The sustainable development policy emphasizes the value of engaging and benefiting local communities and calls for a human rights-based approach to sustainable development, respecting indigenous peoples and local communities, and including them in participatory decision-making processes. Next, please. Majority of the activities of the past two years relate closely to UNESCO's support to its member states in their efforts to implement the 2030 Agenda, including the Biennial Work Plan for 2019-2020. The World Heritage Convention is core to meeting the SDG 11, uh, Target 11.4, to strengthen efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage, and makes an important contribution to several other goals and targets. More specifically, Goal 11 on cities, Goal 13 on climate change, Goal 14 on oceans and seas, Goal uh, 15 on forests and terrestrial ecosystems, and also contributes to targets on 4.7 on education for sustainable development, Goal 5 on gender equality, youth empowerment, and uh, 8.9 and 12B on sustainable tourism, and Goal 17 on global partnerships. At the high-level political forum in New York in 2018, the culture sector launched a publication, Culture for the 2030 Agenda, with illustrative case studies, including several from the 1972 Convention and the 2011 Recommendation on the Historic Urban Landscape on the ways that cultural and natural heritage contribute to the transversal implementation of the SDGs in different regions of the world. Cultural Heritage contributes to SDG 11, and a special training session was organized by the culture sector during the World Urban Forum in Kuala Lumpur in February 2018 on leveraging culture for inclusive and resilient cities. The World Heritage Center also contributed to the Goal 11 synthesis report presented to the 2018 uh, High-Level Political Forum. Next, please. With a view to building resilience and partnership for responding to disasters and conflicts, UNESCO's flagship initiative, Reviving the Spirit of Mosul, as well as the joint work program with the World Bank, included the launch of the joint publication, Culture in City Reconstruction and Recovery. The World Heritage Center carried out a UNESCO member state implementation survey on the 2011 recommendation on the historic urban landscape from February to September of 2018. The full analytical report is available on the World Heritage Center's website uh, on, uh, for the recommendation. The results of the survey were presented to the 206th session of the executive board, which called for reinforcing integration with the 2030 agenda and SDG 11 in particular and the new urban agenda. Next, please. To monitor the SDG Goal 11 Target 4, the UNESCO Institute of Statistics, or UIS, is developing the methodology for indicator 11.4.1. The UNESCO culture sector has developed a draft complementary framework and suite of thematic indicators for culture in the 2030 agenda to measure the contribution of culture to the 2030 agenda. Uh, this framework includes all the six culture conventions and other instruments, including the World Heritage Convention and the Historic Urban Landscape Recommendation. A member state consultation on the indicators was launched on 16th May 2019 and is still open and due to close on 15th July 2019. So you're all invited to respond, if you haven't done so already. Next, please. 
A majority of the operational activities under the World Heritage Convention relate to the con conservation and capacity building, with some that are aimed at improving the socioeconomic conditions of local communities and at post-disaster needs assessment. More support is necessary for operational activities at the local level to implement the sustainable development policy. The World Heritage Center cooperates with the International Indigenous Peoples Forum for World Heritage on the UNESCO-led 2019 International Year of Indigenous Languages and a side event organized during the committee's current session. Beyond the document 5C, the World Heritage Centers and advisory bodies' activities is provided in other documents in the committee's agenda. Next, please. And this is the last slide. The sustainable development policy has been mainstreamed into the convention processes within the ongoing work on the World Heritage Policy Compendium and in the revisions to the periodic reporting framework. Reactive monitoring missions have, in some cases, um, identified sustainable development issues, um, especially with regard to unsustainable tourism. The World Heritage Center has made structured efforts to ensure a gender-sensitive and gender-balanced approach uh, in the implementation of its activities in conformity with the policy and the UNESCO's Priority Gender Equality and Action Plan for 2014 to, to 2021. Much more needs to be done to systematically mainstream the uh, sustainable development policy into the implementation of the convention on the one hand and into operational activities at the national and local levels on the other. Additional funding is necessary for the World Heritage Center to develop activities to operationalize the sustainable development policy at the local level. Um, developing uh, also necessary tools and indicators and developing methodologies for localizing the sustainable development policy, including pilot projects. Also necessary are efforts to promote policy coherence and synergies with, of the sustainable development policy with the uh, SDGs and other relevant global agreements, such as those related to the Climate Change Agreement, the Paris Agreement, the Disaster Risk Reduction Sendai Framework, as well as related World Heritage strategies and policies. And with that, I stop here. Thank you very much, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I would like to inquire about the questions and amendments, maybe comments. Uh, Ecomos, please. Thank you, Chairperson. To assist the efficiency of the World Heritage Committee's work in many uh, relevant topics, the three advisory bodies have prepared joint interventions. So in this case, I present the intervention on behalf of all three advisory bodies, ICMOS, IUCN, and ICRAM. The World Heritage Convention contributes to the achieving of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in many ways, and therefore the advisory bodies strongly support the need to further operationalize the sustainable development goals, which can sustain and enhance the outstanding universal value of world heritage, and at the same time, represent exemplary initiatives to be extended beyond world heritage into wider concerns of local communities. Many initiatives are underway since the adoption of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy, as is illustrated by the paper and presentation you've just heard. These contribute toward the achievement of this policy's objectives. It is crucial that synergies among their results are supported and made more robust through operationalization at site, national, and regional levels, giving specific attention to those World Heritage properties that are most in need of support, such as those on the list of World Heritage in danger. This aspect is addressed in more detail in the Joint Advisory Body Statement on Item 5D, which is yet to come. The Site Managers Forum held here uh, this week, uh, last week in Baku 
underlined the importance of site-based strategies and activities embedded into management instruments for the successful operationalization of sustainable development goals and implementation of good practices in this realm. As many uh, members of the committee will know, ICMAS and IUCN have recently been developing the Connecting Practice Project, which is now in phase three, aiming to strengthen the understanding of nature culture processes and an improving management approaches. ICOMOS continues its commitment to sustainable development with a broader perspective, coordinating a diverse range of heritage work and channeling it to the global development policy platforms through the ICOMOS SDGs working group and through the implementation of its action plan, cultural heritage and localizing the SDGs. Further details on this work was presented uh, this morning, this afternoon under agenda item 5B and there is a dedicated ICOMOS webpage. I must close by saying that the advisory bodies consider that there is much important and urgent work needed to effectively operationalize the powerful commitments made in the World Heritage and Sustainable Development Policy and its key overarching provisions for environmental sustainability, inclusive social and economic development respecting gender equity and rights-based approaches and fostering peace and security. The advisory bodies are committed to these long-term goals in the implementation of the World Heritage Convention and in their shared programs such as World Heritage Leadership. There are a number of related side events in the advisory body space organized here in Baku and our focal points for sustainable development climate action and rights-based approaches are available to discuss practical approaches and collaboration opportunities with participants to this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'm giving the floor to Brazil, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll be very brief just to, to, um, to express how grateful we are to the World Heritage Center and to the advice, advisory body for the presentation of the progress report on the implementation of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy since the 41st session of the World Heritage Committee in Krakow in 2017. We would like to commend uh, the support given to uh, member states in their efforts to implement the 2030 agenda, especially with regard to the promotion of the role of culture for sustainable development. We would also like to commend uh, especially the role of the World Heritage Center for its support to SDG target 8.9 on device and implement uh, policies to promote sustainable tourism, which creates job and target 8.9, sorry. Uh, sorry, to create jobs and uh, promote uh, local culture and products, as well as to target 12.B, develop and implement tools to monitor sustainable development impacts on sustainable tourism. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Norway, please. So it's a, it's a document where all interventions are in that will be typed from the record. So it is that. Yes, it's typed. But no. No, the, she's taking. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now I appreciate all the work done to implement the strategic plan for sustainable development. With or close to Norwegian World Heritage Sites, we face initiatives for heavy urban development, building of highway roads, aquaculture production and building of large tourist facilities. We are in a constant discussion with industry, local governments and stakeholders about what kind of social and economic development that is in accordance with the protection of the outstanding universal values of the sites. In this landscape of crossing interest, we must remind each other that the World Heritage Convention and its instruments was established in 1972 as a tool to help state parties take the right choices in these situations. 
We need to achieve the right balance between environment, social and economic sustainability, while fully respecting and protecting the OUV of the sites. The state of conservation report and data listing are tools we have developed meant to help state parties achieve this sustainable development in accordance with conservation of the OUV. We all challenge and conflict this and conf with all faced challenges and conflicting interests must be solved not by compromising on the protection and disturbing the integrity of the sites, but by integrating conservation and management approach for the World Heritage Properties with larger regional planning frameworks. For many World Heritage Properties, achieving sustainable development requires acting at a scale that is much larger than the property itself. Norway would like to highlight the importance of strategic environmental assessments, which evaluates different possible locations for economic development. The no-go policy for mining and oil exploration and exploitation and the, the com committee's uh, position on hydropower development means that planning and development of these activities cannot be done within her World Heritage Sites and should be re redirected to other locations. In order to nurse ideas and projects that can coexist and interact positively with the world heritage values and to redirect or change those that don't, we need to work closely with local communities and politicians. If they understand and recognize the values of the sites, discussion can be taken at an early stage in the planning process and conflict interests can be easier, easier solved. Norway recognizes supports the draft decision and development of a clear roadmap for implementation and monitoring progress for the sustainable development policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. No other requests. Uh, may I ask a rapporteur about information? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No amendments for this draft decision. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Comme c'est pour la première fois que nous prenons la parole, donc nous aimerions également remercier et féliciter la République d'Azerbaïdjan pour la parfaite organisation de cette session du Comité du patrimoine mondial. Également, nous souhaitons donc du succès pour la conduite de nos travaux. Nous voulons féliciter donc le centre et, et, et les organes consultatifs pour les documents qui nous ont été présentés pour euh, souligner quelques progrès qui ont été faits depuis, disons, le lancement de cette réflexion autour de la conservation du patrimoine et du développement durable. Nous aimerions ici euh, souligner quelques aspects dans la partie 3 du document qui nous semblent être très importants. Cette partie intitulée « Actions prévues et voies à suivre », c'est-à-dire c'est des pistes pour euh, trouver des solutions à cette tâche que le document, d'ailleurs, considère comme étant euh, ardu et, 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 et non impossible à exécuter. Donc c'est une note importante de savoir que trouver l'équilibre entre la conservation du patrimoine et le développement durable continue à être un exercice difficile qui demande une réflexion ou des réflexions assez profondes pour trouver des méthodes et des approches plus adaptées devant aider les États parties à respecter la Convention et à pouvoir, euh, disons, permettre aux populations de bénéficier de ces ressources patrimoniales, mais également de pouvoir les transmettre aux générations futures. Donc, partant de cet exercice difficile, nous pensons que dans les prochains débats, certainement le point qui suivra, nous reviendrons particulièrement sur la priorité afrique pour essayer d'étayer un certain nombre d'arguments 
qui pourront faire avancer ces réflexions. Je vous remercie. Thank you for the chair. Regarding the sustainable development goals, especially the matters related to the historic urban landscape, the government of Japan would like to inform the World Heritage Committee about our plan of hosting international expert meeting for this matter. As recent session of the World Heritage Committee, the number of cases which have some challenges in urban context has been increasing. Under the circumstances, we consider that it is necessary to discuss and establish the methodology or tools which identify and evaluate the values of heritage sites in urban contexts as a common ground of the HIA within the context of the HUL recommendation. In order to respond to this important expectation, the government of Japan will host an international expert meeting in Japan in January 2020. As for the detailed concept and agenda of the meeting, the government of Japan wishes to closely collaborate with ECOMOS and other bodies. And informal exchange of the opinion with ECOMOS have already been started. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, the non-governmental organization WALHI, Friends of the Earth from Indonesia. Please, you're welcome. I'm Eddie H. from WALHI. We are the largest grassroots environmental network in Indonesia. Indonesia has thousand ethnicities which develop as a result of people rooting their identities and culture in the rich diversity and spicy of their local lands and natural resources. Historically, the environmental and social conflict we see in Indonesia only began in the last 50 years. This is because of the dramatic shift toward an extractive model of development. It has made many forget that the local and indigenous community have already developed ways and knowledge to used resources in, in its balance with nature. This indigenous knowledge is extremely, extremely undervalued. We cannot achieve sustainable development unless we recognize the value of indigenous knowledge in guiding and enabling development choices. While he has promoted a localized model of sustainable development based on this, we call it community management area. This model aims to create economic wealth based on customary knowledge of local resources. For instance, by drawing on their deep understanding of peatland ecosystem, communities in Tohor River in Riau choose Segu as a sustainable, economically beneficial alternative to harmful palm oil plantation. Their success demonstrates that the mandate for economic development is not opposed with environmental conservation and that communities play a, a valuable role in using indigenous knowledge to identify sustainable alternatives that can enrich instead of impo impoverished local communities. The community management area model can help addressing threats facing both heritage sites, such as the tropical rainforest heritage of Sumatra. It can help resolve destructive projects that are driving environmental and social conflict that are harming other ec iconic ecosystems. This includes the Tampur Dam in Lesser Ecosystem and Batang Toru Dam in Batang Toru Ecosystem, which may cause to the extinction of the critically endangered Tapanoli orangutan. We respectfully call on the committee and start parties to consider in any approach to sustainable development the central role that local communicate communities must play in, in managing and safeguarding their natural resources. Thank you. Thank you, but I would like to apply to all the speakers to speak a little bit slower, to make interpreters possible to the translation, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Now, we, we have another NGO there, indigenous, if I'm not mistaken, on the right side. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm speaking on behalf of the International Indigenous Peoples Forum on World Heritage which is the forum of indigenous peoples that aims to develop a coordinated, constructive, and effective participation of indigenous peoples in all processes of the World Heritage Convention. We appreciate the actions and decisions mentioned in the progress report in paragraphs 37 to 40, and would urge the committee, the center, and the advisory bodies to adopt further actions. Among others, we missed sust substantive indigenous peoples' participation in the screening of the operational guidelines 
for relevant changes. Most importantly, the inclusion of the um, established international norm of free prior and informed consent in relation to the nominations of the World Heritage List. This by itself is in contrast to the principle of FPIC and is not in line with the UNESCO policy on indigenous peoples and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which require UN agencies and um, organs to establish ways and means of effective participation of indigenous peoples on issues affecting us. Concretely, Mr. Chairman, we recommend to include in the decision of, on this item the facilitation of a truly participatory process to the revision of the operational guidelines with respect to indigenous peoples' rights. We further recommend including the following actions in planned actions and way forward. First, the effective inclusion of indigenous peoples' representatives in the development of the roadmap. Two, the, uh, to develop a concrete strategy and program for the World Heritage Center in collaboration with our representatives. This is recommended since much work on such as drafting reports and proposals happens at secretariat's level. And finally, we urge the advisory bodies to also develop and adopt such strategy and program for collaboration and effective participation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, now I think we can proceed to the uh, adoption of the draft decision. Uh, 5C, which is contained in point four of document 5C. So we don't have any uh, amendments uh, done to reporter. So if there are no other comment, I declare the draft decision 43, con 5C, adopted. Before I move to the next item, I would like to give the floor to the deputy of the center, please. You want to. Thank you very much. I just wanted to mention that uh, should there be an interest uh, for people to discuss this uh, way forward further, uh, member states uh, uh, to discuss this further, we uh, or, or others, we have uh, a room reserved B5 uh, at 6 o'clock right after the session is over to gather for 15-20 uh, minutes before the start of other side events. Uh, to, to just consider a little bit more uh, concretely the ways forward and see how we want to, to take it further. So maybe 20 minutes to half an hour at the most, B5 at 6 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, we will note it. Now we are moving to the item 5D, Priority Africa, Sustainable Development and World Heritage. Uh, 5D is cons uh, I would like to give the floor in, with this concern to Mr. Mokala, Chief of the Africa Unit of the Center, to present the draft document. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairperson. Uh, the item 5D, Priority Africa Sustainable Development and War Heritage, uh, it was during the examination at the agenda for the 43rd session of the 42nd session of the World Heritage Committee and at the request of the African state parties, the committee by decision 42 COM 17 invited the Secretariat to report on Priority Africa, Sustainable Development and World Heritage. My presentation will be covering uh, the first part focusing on the state of conservation of war heritage in Africa, in particular the cultural situation as well as the natural situation. Then I will be highlighting the war heritage sustainable development policy application in the African continent with some concrete example of activities we've been conducting in the continent. We'll be looking also on the global partnership in regard to the implementation of the policy. And then uh, uh, we will highlight some of the challenges that the continent has been facing in this regard, and then propose some way forward for the committee's consideration. So regarding the state conservation of world heritage in Africa, I uh, would like just to indicate that, as you will know very well, that uh, Africa's heritage, both cultural and natural, are really unique in that they testify uh, to the past of human civilization, it is a source of identity and livelihood for the communities and the population. 
Uh, it strengthens the resilience of the communities and it also plays a significant role in the transmission of local skills and indigenous knowledge for innovative and sustainable solutions to local needs. Next. We looking into the natural heritage sites, we have natural world heritage properties which stand as unique witness to the earth geological and biological changes, designated protected areas or biosphere reserves in addition to world heritage status. They also, uh, uh, many of these uh, natural are great importance and account of the biodiversity uh, in the world. Next. The Statistics uh, situation in Africa could be summarized with uh, the 53 state parties out of the 193. Uh, we have uh, 42 with war heritage sites, 11 without war heritage sites. We have uh, 136 war heritage properties out of the 1,092, which really stand for 12% uh, underlying the underrepresentation in that area. We have 88 cultural properties, 42 natural, and six mixed. Uh, we have 22 of those war heritage properties in danger out of the 54, they are all in Africa. Next. The policy then addresses three dimensions of sustainable development. Uh, in particular, it really focuses on the environmental sustainability, the inclusive social development, in particular in ensuring really that the interest of the local communities is always put uh, at the front line when addressing conservation and safeguarding so that it really brings in benefits for the local community. Uh, it focuses also on the inclusive economic development and again, uh, the second, third part also stresses the improve of living condition of the local communities that are the first guardian of the safeguarding of this cultural and natural heritage. Next. And so it is in full conformity with the Africa we want, the Agenda 2063, uh, which is focused really on common identity and destiny for the continent. It uh, uh, builds on equity, poverty alleviation, and inclusive development, while upholding the, the importance of safeguarding heritage that contribute to achieving the 2030 Year Development Agenda. Next. We, based on some of the concrete programs that we have implemented in the last uh, couple of years, uh, it, it has been driven in particular through the Ngorongoro declarations, which really spearheaded uh, uh, programs, which some of them were earlier than the Ngorongoro declaration, like Africa Nature, the Compact, which really focuses on community development, uh, heritage education, which really brings in the dimension of educational institution in this with safeguarding of heritage, Transboundary peace and security as addressing also the issue of uh, mutual uh, cooperation to the transboundary uh, 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 sites uh, by enabling cooperation, peace also, and looking into the benefits of the local communities. And last but not the least, we have been also actively uh, cooperating with several state parties as well as potential partners in promoting capacity building. And in the latest one was to the UNESCO Africa China Forum, which was held just recently as presented by both the Director General and also the Director of the Heritage Center. Next. We have uh, flagship projects uh, that are quite well known and covering significant key regions in Africa. The first one is Kaufi uh, project, which is the Central African World Heritage Forest Initiative that deals in particular in the Central African region. The second one is the Biosphere and Heritage of Lake Chad, which really focuses on the Lake Chad region. And then we have also the, um, uh, the cooperation with uh, UNESCO field offices, which implements quite a lot of programs and activities in the region. Next. We have another part now, which is the Africa World Heritage Fund, uh, with, uh, uh, who is the category two centers of UNESCO. Uh, they are the one that really take uh, a, quite a large number of activities all over the continent. And as you can see from the map, you really see all the areas that they've been covering through capacity building, training, as well as workshop they've been organizing, just to building capacity all over the continents. Next. 
We uh, worked at, on the, challenge, the challenges that the continent uh, is facing, uh, as you will see, as it has been really presented in the document. Uh, the challenges remain. Uh, the continent is still facing the highest population growth, the one with the weakest economy, high infant mortality rate, short, uh, short age life expectancy, high illiteracy rate, and food security, which comes to build into the already existing challenges on uh, conservation and management of world heritage. Next. And so the challenges we see, we have conflict, intentional destruction, looting, poaching, illegal trade, uh, absence of national strategy for natural resources extraction, absence of the governance and institutional structure for heritage management, um, economic opportunity with negative impact in most cases, and an increased climate-related risk caused by decline of biodiversity. Next. So on the way forward, we would like really to uh, uh, propose, and that's in that direction that we've been working already in the last couple of years, is uh, looking into alternative solution to socioeconomic development needs, prosperity with climate resilience approach, uh, innovative solution for integrated world heritage protection in national policies, community-focused development that really put the community at the front line, uh, the interests of the community, the capacity of the communities, and also the, uh, uh, cost, uh, the role of custodian of the heritage being really at the front line, so inclusion in decision-making processes as well. Sustainable green livelihoods that use local resources, uh, capacity building of local community use and transmission of cultural and environmental knowledge, a strengthening capacity for all stakeholders and sharing of knowledge, experiences, and good practices. Now, this is a non-exhaustive uh, uh, list of uh, some of the points that we wanted to highlight, but you have most of the details already in the document that has been really put uh, 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 on the table uh, to you. So maybe with this, a few, uh, just a very short introductory part, I would like to terminate here, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to open the floor for discussions and proposals, amendments on the item 5D. You're welcome. Are you uh, IUCN, please. No, I already gave it. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, according to the rules of procedure, I have to give the floor first to the members of the committee. Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Je voudrais remercier le secrétariat de ce rapport, à la fois exhaustif, mais qui nous met devant nos responsabilités. Je crois que les chiffres qui ont été avancés doivent nous interpeller tous. J'en rappelle quelques-uns pour la cohérence du propos. 27% des pays membres sont africains, 12% uniquement des sites sont inscrits, inscrits sont en Afrique. Et on pourrait même rajouter à, à ces chiffres-là probablement le nombre de sites africains sur les listes indicatives des pays membres. Et on verra que l'écart, non seulement, est celui que nous voyons, mais il risque de se développer davantage. C'est pour cela, Monsieur le Président, que la prise de conscience de nous tous est extrêmement importante, et au nom de la Tunisie, je souhaite la saluer. Mais cela ne suffit pas. Je crois qu'il y a des éléments qui, autour de cette situation, doivent nous interpeller aussi ici. Je parle, par exemple, du nombre d'experts. Euh, africains sur les listes d'experts. Je parle aussi du nombre d'originaires de, des pays d'Afrique dans le système de, de la convention dans son sens général. Ces éléments réunis nous donnent une situation, l'expliquent et probablement fragilisent les ambitions des uns et des autres. Je souhaite ici rappeler qu'à nos yeux, ce n'est pas une question uniquement technique, ce n'est pas une question uniquement liée aux moyens ou aux, aux ressources, c'est une question éthique. Est-ce que nous croyons que la valeur même du patrimoine mondial est une valeur en partage. Si nous croyons qu'elle est une valeur en partage, eh bien nous devons 
sur le plan éthique, relever ce défi. Et je crois que c'est celui des décennies futures et de la crédibilité même de notre système. À chacun de nous de voir ce qu'il peut faire, ce qu'il doit faire en vue de corriger cette anomalie de notre système. Et je souligne anomalie éthique. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Brazil, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. We received with great satisfaction the report of the World Heritage Committee and the advisory bodies on an item proposed by Brazil during the 42nd session of this committee on Priority Africa, Sustainable Development and World Heritage. The report highlights, in the context of Africa, the three dimensions of sustainable development namely environmental sustainability, inclusive social development, and inclusive economic development, together with the fostering of peace and security. The report also presents a diagnose of the challenges and pressures proposed to the continent to envision solutions to its development needs and aspirations in ways that enhance the safeguarding of the outstanding universal value of world heritage properties. According to the report, a very large number of sites in the African continent are inscribed in the World Heritage List uh, in danger, most of them natural properties. In this regard, we welcome the cooperation of the Secretariat with strategic partners in the organization of capacity building activities for conservation and management of World Heritage properties, as well as cooperation with UNESCO's field offices for the implementation of projects to safeguard the World Heritage sites for communities through capacity building on conservation and management. We look forward to additional efforts in order to assist African countries to remove both cultural and natural sites from the list of World Heritage in danger and to protect World Heritage sites taking into consideration the three dimensions of sustainable development. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, Uganda, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Earlier today, Uganda pronounced herself on the critical need for sustainable management of cultural and natural resources. The maintenance of such a resource outstanding universal value cannot be overemphasized, especially the fact that there is enormous pressure to respond to increased demand for, for urbanization and for agriculture expansion to feed the increasing population. Consequently, to protect heritage resources in circumstances where communities are in dire need of basic needs of life, the state parties are faced with a huge challenge. As heritage managers and political stewards, we need to put in place frameworks and mechanisms that will improve the welfare of the communities and the local economies of the state at the same time without compromising the outstanding universal values. This challenge is huge and requires international action. With the above in mind, Mr. Chairman, Uganda is fully cognizant of the fact that the world's natural and cultural heritage sites inside Africa and beyond hold a wealth of irreplaceable, tangible, and intangible heritages. These resources are worthy getting full protection by concerned African state parties that are faced with the growing challenges of balancing heritage protection with extractive infrastructure and processing activities. The delegation of Uganda is in full solidarity with the fellow African state parties in welcoming the adoption of draft decision 43, COM 5D. And I thank you very much indeed for listening to me. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Now, uh, Burkina Faso, you have the floor. Thank you. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Comme c'est la première fois que je prends la parole durant cette session, permettez-moi de remercier l'État ou l'Azerbaïdjan pour son accueil chaleureux et pour la brillante cérémonie d'ouverture d'hier. 
Madame la Présidente, Mesdames et Messieurs les experts, l'invitation faite au secrétariat du comité de faire rapport sur priorité Afrique et particulièrement sur le développement durable du patrimoine mondial en Afrique en cette 43e session du comité du patrimoine mondial qui se tient à Bakou est pour nous une des meilleures façons d'interpeller la communauté internationale sur les spécificités les réalités africaines par rapport au reste du monde et la nécessité d'en tenir compte dans les projets de développement. La présentation de ce rapport intervient dans un contexte où, faut-il le rappeler, il devient plus que nécessaire d'œuvrer à l'amélioration du bien-être, l'équité et l'équilibre tant recherchés grâce à des interventions collectives pour des changements profonds sans lesquels le développement souhaité serait probablement non durable, en d'autres termes, sans résultat positif. Or, précisément, mesdames et messieurs, les pays africains souhaitent centrer leurs efforts de développement sur les bénéfices pour leur communauté en encourageant leur participation aux décisions concernant leur sort, en tenant compte de leurs besoins réels à partir d'une conservation progressive et préventive du patrimoine naturel et culturel se trouvant dans les différentes régions du continent. Pour cette région, ma délégation appuie fortement un certain nombre de... de de un certain nombre d'amendements qui ont été faits au projet de décision. Je vous remercie beaucoup pour votre attention. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to the delegation of Norway. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Natural and cultural heritage in the African region is indeed unique and invaluable, but we also recognize the many and severe challenges and threats that it is facing. Funding and assistance available for properties inscribed on the World Heritage List in danger is not adequate, and there is often a mismatch between recommended conservation measures and the funding available to address this. We therefore hope that this report on Africa, sustainable development and world heritage marks the beginning of a global increased focus on a region that really deserves attention and prioritization. States parties to the convention should support programs in the African region that integrate sustainable development perspectives into heritage conservation. The ongoing and future projects outlined in the Annex are great opportunities to contribute to protecting African world heritage properties, while at the same time pursuing sustainable uh, development objectives. In these efforts, we would particularly like to highlight the role of the local communities as they hold important knowledge to ensure protection of World Heritage properties. It is crucial that local communities take part in decision-making to make sure that the development is inclusive and sustainable. Norway supports the draft decision. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I now pass the floor to the distinguished uh, delegation of Zimbabwe. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Zimbabwe is concerned that uh, the issue of the need to balance, to have a balance between conservation and development, in as far as African world heritage sites is concerned, has been on the table for a long time. We note that what has been missing up to now is action to drive this process through. We are aware and we are in support of the African Union's agenda 2063 and uh, our national development programs, which are really 
aimed at ensuring that uh, we manage our world heritage sites in a sustainable manner. We are calling for action by bringing this item onto the agenda for the 43rd session. We are calling for action to move from just speaking about the issue, but to now start acting on it. We are calling on the advisory bodies to together with the World Heritage Center to look seriously into this, action, uh, this aspect, reflect on it, and devise a plan of action aimed at achieving this um, objective. We are in support, full support of the draft decision that has been made on this item, but we are looking towards action. So we, also, we really appeal to all involved, the Secretariat through the World Heritage Center, the advisory bodies, to come together, work with the state parties, African state parties, to come up with an action plan so that we move this uh, process forward and achieve the balance that is required, considering that we are facing, the African states are facing a number of challenges which have been outlined in the uh, report of the Secretariat. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor para a distinta delegação de Angola. Com a palavra, por favor. Angola. Muito obrigado. Madame la Présidente, nous aimerions Madame avant toute chose féliciter les centres pour uh, like to, uh, le rapport qui vient de, de nous être soumis. That, uh, Et comme le Président l'a déclaré and hier dans son discours à la cérémonie d'ouverture, uh, ce point constitue ceremony, un des sujets majeurs de nos discussions really parce qu'il touche to les enjeux actuels de la mise en œuvre de la Convention really de 1972 issue, en parlant du développement durable de la conservation du patrimoine. Dans un contexte spécifique qui est le contexte africain, et nous tenons à remercier le membre du comité d'avoir décidé de traiter spécifiquement cette question de la priorité afrique lors de cette session. Parler du développement durable et de la conservation du patrimoine nous renvoie au bien-être et à la qualité de vie des populations locales, surtout le plus défavorisé, si nous voulons parler de la justice sociale. Madame la Présidente, parler du concept de développement, surtout du développement durable dans le cadre de la vision 2030 des Nations Unies, dont l'objectif principal est l'éradication de la pauvreté, nous interpelle tous à une réflexion plus profonde, surtout dans le cadre des régions les plus défavorisées du monde, telles que l'Afrique. Les concepts de développement ne devraient pas être considérés de manière linéaire à cause des inégalités aussi évidentes qui s'observent entre les différentes parties du monde et différentes régions du monde. Voilà pourquoi on parle de plusieurs catégories, des pays développés, des pays en développement ou des pays émergents ou des pays sous-développés. Et dans cette perspective, l'Afrique est un cas spécifique. Nous ne pouvons parler de développement sans prendre en compte les droits de l'homme, notamment les droits de l'homme de base. Accès à l'éducation, accès à la santé, accès à l'eau potable, à l'alimentation, etc., tel que la Déclaration universelle des droits de l'homme le déclare. Si nous analysons les indicateurs qui nous sont présentés dans le paragraphe 33 du document 5D, ils nous prouvent clairement que les droits de l'homme de base pour la majorité des populations africaines sont encore loin d'être assurés. Il s'agit encore des rêves pour ces populations, loin ou voire impossibles. Il est vrai que dans l'esprit de la Convention, la conservation du patrimoine est hautement souhaitée afin de permettre ces derniers 
des services et des leviers du développement durable, mais certaines questions méritent d'être posées. Est-ce que seuls les biens du patrimoine mondial bien conservés pourraient améliorer les cadres précaires du développement du continent africain en éradiquant la pauvreté pour les communautés locales et Pour qui les biens du patrimoine mondial sont-ils conservés Pour ces populations locales dont les droits de l'homme de base ne sont pas assurés Nous aimerions avoir de finir, Madame la Présidente, dire que dans la perspective de trouver des solutions appropriées dans le cadre de l'Afrique, les experts africains sous la coordination du Fonds du patrimoine mondial africain ont développé des documents importants, la position africaine sur le patrimoine mondial et le développement durable et l'appel à l'action d'Alger. Donc nous aimerions, compte tenu de ce qu'a déclaré la directrice générale de l'UNESCO hier, la solidarité internationale qui est requise pour accompagner l'Afrique à trouver des solutions les plus adaptées à ces compromis aussi difficiles, nous avons soumis justement des amendements au projet de décision en demandant à ce que les comités prennent note de cette position africaine qui pourrait nous aider muito obrigada. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to the distinguished delegate of Azerbaijan. Please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My delegation is happy to associate itself to this agenda item. Uh, which was also proposed by Azerbaijan and, support, of course, supported and co-sponsored by the delegation of Brazil in Bahrain. Uh, uh, we believe that this is, an, uh, as it is the first agenda item in the, in, the, in the committee session, we believe it is extremely important, and I think the report pre presented by the Secretariat, and we are very thankful for them for this very informative report, Uh, shows that we were right in proposing this agenda item. The uh, numbers and the figures here are quite alarming, and this needs, uh, a, a, I would say, urgent reaction from the committee members, from the international community, to help and uh, to support African aspirations for the preservation of the cultural and, I would say, more, more or less natural heritage. So in this regard, we support the idea of, of the capacity building and, and bringing more uh, resources for the capacity building. And we appreciate those states who supported uh, Africa in, in this regard. And Azerbaijan is also is ready and committed to do its uh, support and provide its uh, also uh, modest contribution in this regard for the capacity uh, building in, in, in Africa. Uh, we, we would like to also touch upon a very important issue raised by many uh, members of the committee is the balance between the sustainable development and preservation. I think this is an extremely important uh, issue and we have debated this uh, in this committee for uh, many times. And, uh, I think uh, this balance is particularly important in the context of Africa, uh, where there are some uh, uh, the projects uh, which aim to to, uh, the, to increase uh, the, the to, to, to to increase the development of the country uh, and the, the countries. Uh, in in that regard, we are uh, very thankful for the information provided uh, by the Secretariat. Uh, and also those challenges, challenges for the implementation of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Program in Africa. We also commend uh, the activities of the Africa World Heritage Fund, and uh, we, uh, we have a very good cooperation uh, with this uh, fund, and according and with, uh, with the, with the uh, request, I would say, or the advisors of this World Heritage Fund, uh, we invited uh, site managers from Africa to participate in site managers forum of this year in Azerbaijan. Uh, the finally, the partnership, partnership with the private uh, sector, and this is another area that 
we believe UNESCO Secretariat needs to explore more. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I would now pass the floor to the delegation of Spain. Con la palabra, España. Give the floor to Spain now, please. Muchas gracias, Thank señora presidenta. Much, Esta mañana ya manifestamos morning, nuestra satisfacción porque se incluya la prioridad de África en el desarrollo sostenible del patrimonio. Y coincidimos con una buena parte de la intervención de nuestros colegas de, de Noruega y también anunciamos que apoyamos en términos generales la, el proyecto de decisión que se plantea. Y si bien haremos cuando, supongo que tendremos un momento procedimental, cuando esté en pantalla, para hacer algún añadido. Queremos, eh, creemos que hay que garantizar el apoyo técnico y, en su caso, económico a este continente por cuanto tiene necesidades básicas, lo han expresado ya algunos de sus representantes mejor que yo, y por tanto tenemos que ver esas asimetrías entre las necesidades básicas que el continente plantea y las exigencias que les estamos planteando en cuanto a la protección del valor universal del patrimonio. En cualquier caso, nosotros sí que consideramos que de alguna manera hemos de tener garantía de, ese, de esa protección del valor universal del patrimonio, incluyendo el, una evaluación de, de los proyectos de desarrollo nacionales y también, sobre todo, los estados eh, foráneos, proyectos internacionales desarrollados en África, que, que incluya una evaluación real de impacto medioambiental de todos los proyectos. No solo es exigir al, al Estado en concreto que eh, proteja el valor universal del patrimonio en la medida de sus posibilidades, sino que otros países avanzados que invierten en el continente tienen que ser conscientes de su obligación de preservar también ese valor y colaborar con los distintos estados eh, presentando, incluyendo en todos sus proyectos una evaluación clara de impacto medioambiental. Pero les decía que apoyamos la resolución y que en el momento procedimental oportuno intentaremos hacer eh, hincapié en el texto sobre esta idea de implementar medidas que hagan que los estados inversores también cumplan y no solo eh, nos escudemos en exigirle al Estado eh, afectado o proponente de un proyecto de, de patrimonio que cumpla determinadas medidas. Nada más y muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I would pass the floor now to the delegation of Tanzania. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My delegation fully seconds uh, Angola and Azerbaijan and aligns itself to the growing position that heritage should be viewed as an enabler rather than a compromise to sustainable development. In the same token, Madam Chair, we fully subscribe to the spirit of balancing economic welfare, social inclusiveness, and environmental health. However, it is clear that poverty alleviation stands out prominently as one of the priority agendas for the Africa region in particular especially given that it is the most hit in terms of economic prosperity. Currently, Madam Chair, the African population living in absolute poverty stands at 40%, which is the highest globally. Chairperson, the point in case is that the relatively small contribution of the World Heritage Properties for improving local livelihoods dismays the African region. The reason is partly embedded within the inflexibility of the implementation processes of the World Heritage Convention itself. Consequently, the otherwise wider options available for the World Heritage properties in fostering sustainable development opportunities remain unexplored. At its, at its extreme, this strictness is manifested in strict conditionalities for some possible socioeconomic options that could otherwise be explored with best practice environmental and technological solutions. Chairperson, in the eyes of Tanzania and the African region at large, such restrictions appear to be disproportional to the nature, scope, and complexity of the problem at hand. Indeed, it puts to test both the evolution of the World Heritage Sustainable Development concept, efforts undertaken so far, and the relevance of the convention itself. Given the recent technological advancement, coupled with improved planning tools, the African region considers it fair to harness the socioeconomic wealth of World Heritage from an innovative and a much wider scale 
when determined that such ambitions are reasonably environmentally benign. This is especially critical in the context of Africa as it will timely synergize the ongoing poverty alleviation efforts as foreseen in the Agenda 2063. To this end, Chairperson, my delegation joins Angola to submit amendments to the draft decision. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to the delegation of Australia. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, Africa's legitimate need for development is understood and accepted. Uh, the point made by the distinguished delegate of Angola regarding access to human rights is the foundation from which this discussion uh, emanates. The challenge of conserving world heritage sites in Africa are related primarily to economic development challenges in the region, uh, the balancing of economic growth rising population and the need to protect and conserve biodiversity and eco ecosystem services. And this is particularly the case in the face of climate change, which is predicted to have disproportionate impacts in Africa. Uh, we agree with uh, the, uh, the intervention made by Norway and in particular its observation about it being critical to integrate sustainable development objectives uh, into heritage protection and management. We, uh, as, uh, as a World Heritage Community, as states, parties, need to invest in building capacity and move into a serious action phase as called for uh, by Zimbabwe. We need to do this so that we, the states, parties, who are individually uh, and collectively so that we can fulfil our obligations for the protection of the world's outstanding cultural and natural heritage. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to the distinguished delegation of China. China, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wish to, first of all, to commend the World Heritage Center uh, for this uh, uh, very good report, uh, which we uh, uh, would like to associate ourselves with. Uh, uh, and uh, we also notice with uh, great pleasure that the uh, World Heritage Center's responsiveness to the needs of Africa in the last past year. Um, we had a successful uh, meet, uh, meeting, uh, a joint meeting uh, between UNESCO and China and the African uh, uh, nations uh, on World Heritage Capacity Building and the Cooperation in June. Uh, it was uh, well received, uh, we understand. Uh, we hope it's uh, helpful to African nations, but also we in China, we benefited a great deal as well from this experience and we should welcome uh, other uh, member state, state parties to join in in, in such uh, uh, collaborative, collaborative work in the future. Uh, we also noticed uh, with uh, great pleasure that the, the number of uh, side events uh, during this 43rd uh, 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 World Heritage uh, Committee meeting uh, in Baku, that uh, they are related to Africa, and uh, which we, uh, we think is a very positive and important uh, 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 good start in this uh, endeavor. And uh, we certainly hope that uh, this momentum can be kept. And uh, we fully endorse uh, uh, Azerbaijan and Angola's comment on, on the. We hope that the, in the long run, the efforts in the future uh, concerning the Afri uh, in the Africa region in for priority Africa, um, there will be, we will continue in the capacity building work, but eventually we also hope to see the reduction of the number of uh, African properties in the endangered list, 
while at the same time hoping to see the increase in the number of properties in Africa in the World Heritage uh, List. Thank you. Thank you very much. I we would now like to listen to the delegation of Senegal. Please, you have the floor. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Thank you, Madam Chair. La délégation sénégalaise exprime ses remerciements au gouvernement d'Azerbaïdjan pour l'accueil chaleureux et la parfaite organisation de cette 43e session. Honorable membres du comité, mesdames et messieurs, l'Afrique en esquivant ses biens culturels et naturels sur le patrimoine mondial espère apporter sa contribution à la civilisation de l'universel. Et nous avons tous l'obligation de gérer ces biens pour leur grande valeur. Mais faudrait-il le rappeler, nous avons inscrit ces biens avec les communautés locales dépositaires de ce patrimoine. Nous avons l'obligation de les gérer avec ces communautés et pour ces communautés. Mesdames et Messieurs, ces communautés qui ne peuvent pas être là ici à Bakou, nous en charge, nous experts qui les côtoyons sur le terrain. Nous ces communautés sont plus que quiconque consciente que ce patrimoine, leur patrimoine, doit être sauvegardé. Mais elles demandent simplement que le droit au mieux-être soit respecté, que l'accès aux infrastructures sociales de base soit assuré, que la femme qui doit accoucher ne meure pas, que les jeunes puissent accéder aux nouvelles technologies dans les écoles et à accès à l'électricité. Donc, dans ces conditions, Comment peut-on leur expliquer que l'UNESCO s'oppose à la construction, par exemple, du Roots, que des pylônes de l'électricité ne doivent pas traverser un parc Ici ou là, bref, on finit par donner l'impression que l'UNESCO et nous-mêmes experts sont contre le développement et le mieux-être de ces communautés. Bien sûr que non, nous ne sommes pas contre ce développement. Vous n'êtes pas contre ce développement, mais nous devons leur apporter des réponses aux questions existentielles qu'elles se posent, de définir des stratégies innovantes adaptées à la spécificité de l'Afrique. C'est le sens de la priorité africaine, c'est l'avenir de notre convention uh, This is the question of priority, uh, priority Africa, and Merci this is central to the very survival of our convention. Uh, Thank you. We would now pass the floor to the distinguished delegation of Cuba. Con la palabra, Cuba, por favor. Give the floor to Cuba now, Gracias. please. Thank you. Gracias, señora presidenta. Thank you, Madam Chair. Siendo nuestra primera intervención, queríamos en primer lugar agradecer al Estado anfitrión Azerbaiyán por la calurosa acogida, por su hospitalidad y dando respuesta también a la directora del Centro de Patrimonio Mundial. Queremos que nuestras intervenciones queden oficialmente registradas en inglés. Con relación al tema de África, para Cuba es altamente sensible todo lo relativo a su cultura a su patrimonio y particularmente queremos reconocer los avances que se han hecho desde los últimos análisis que se han venido realizando en el Comité de Patrimonio Mundial con relación a la situación del patrimonio en África. Creo que las delegaciones que me han precedido y el detallado informe presentado avalan la situación en cuanto a la representatividad de la región en cuanto a la cantidad de sitios en la lista de patrimonio en peligro. Básicamente, consideramos de que si se ha avanzado, el reto es seguir avanzando, seguir dándole prioridad a África como una región con un enorme potencial y creo que la clave está precisamente en el marco de las propias definiciones de la gestión del patrimonio, encontrar respuestas a el, las posibilidades de desarrollo para las comunidades, a la justicia social y a todos los demás objetivos incluidos dentro del de desarrollo en el marco de las Naciones Unidas. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. I would now pass the floor to the delegation of Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, you have the floor. Recevez la parole. Côte d'Ivoire, please, you have the floor. Since I'm taking the floor for the first time, I would like to congratulate you on your chairmanship and uh, extend our appreciation to the authorities of Azerbaijan. 
for hosting this meeting. Madame la Présidente, ma délégation Madame aimerait Chair, appeler l'attention du secrétariat like sur les défis. Il y aura la conciliation des objectifs de conservation du patrimoine mondial et de développement durable. Le pays de la Côte d'Ivoire dispose de quatre biens inscrits sur la liste du patrimoine mondial, dont trois sites naturels et un site culturel. La gestion de ces biens constitue un défi important à relever. Si l'on veut concilier les besoins sans cesse croissants des communautés et la préservation de ces sites, ceci dans un contexte qui est marqué par les changements climatiques, l'urbanisation rapide, et la difficulté d'accéder aux parcelles à des fins agricoles. Dans cette perspective, le gouvernement ivoirien inscrit cette problématique au nombre des priorités dans son plan quinquennal de développement, et ceci en cohérence avec l'agenda 2030. C'est ainsi que des mesures d'atténuation et d'adaptation ont été développées, et au titre des sites naturels, entre autres mesures, nous avons mis en œuvre des actions de préservation de la biodiversité et de valorisation des services écosystémiques, nous avons également mis en place un programme de développement touristique axé sur les valeurs des sites naturels en mettant en avant la culture locale, ceci en collaboration avec les communautés locales. Pour ce qui regarde le site culturel, entre autres mesures, la ville de Grand Bassam s'est dotée d'un agenda 21 en 2016 suite à la COP21. Les valeurs environnementales et paysagères de la même ville ont été mises en avant avec le plan de d'arbres, ce qui a été fait en relation avec les élèves de la ville, et l'aménagement de voies piétonnes. Des activités socio-économiques, notamment le tourisme et l'artisanat, ont été structurées autour des valeurs du site. Comme il apparaît, la Côte d'Ivoire a développé une approche intégrée pour la conservation de ses biens culturels et naturels, avec des organes de gestion qui incluent les communautés locales et des outils de gouvernance, tels que les plans de développement et de gestion des risques et catastrophes qui sont appliqués. J'aimerais, Madame la Présidente, conclure en indiquant la pleine adhésion de la Côte d'Ivoire aux amendements proposés par mes prédécesseurs. Je vous remercie. Merci infiniment. Uh, I also, since I'm taking the floor for the first time, want to uh, express our uh, delight over the hospitality extended to us by uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, we are very, very uh, happy and we feel uh, at home. Uh, Madam Chairperson, I wish to join all other African delegations which express themselves on this issue and which is of uh, primary importance for us as Africans. Uh, our feeling is that the three objectives we're trying to achieve go, one, uh, go hand in hand. The first objective is, of course, the preservation and the transmission of our heritage. The second is for our populations to benefit from this heritage economically. And the third is, of course, to ensure economic development, uh, having an economic policy that enables our uh, populations to benefit from it. We are convinced that it is only by accelerating our economic development that we'll be able to ensure the preservation and hence the transmission of our heritage. In this regard, we feel that cooperation is needed, cooperation at all level, at international level, with the WHC, of course, the African Union, which has a strong position on this issue, uh, and uh, which we, we feel this uh, assembly should take note of, the decision of the African Union. And thirdly, of course, us as member states, we have an obligation towards our population. We feel, Madam Chairperson, that uh, the, the dichotomy that we're trying to put between development and preservation of heritage is not founded. It is only by accelerating and developing our countries that we'll be able to ensure the, the preservation and transmission of our heritage. For us, as Ethiopia, we are following a green policy. We are following a policy that ensures the participation of our population in our development, and we are also striving to preserve our heritage. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to IUCN. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. On behalf of all the advisory body, I send one to present this comment. The challenges and threats facing natural and cultural world heritage properties in Africa are continuing and unfortunately, there are disproportionate number of properties in Africa inscribed on the list of world heritage in danger. The advisory bodies therefore welcome this new agenda item focusing on the African continent. The advisory body recognizes the particular development context 
and drives in Africa, and fully acknowledge the need to mobilize additional support for sustainable development activities that can maintain and enhance the outstanding universal value of World Heritage Site. At the same time, we should be clear that the World Heritage Convention is a global instrument and we must therefore adopt a global frame of reference applying common standards, policies, and procedures, which cannot differ by reason. We must rather direct our attention to those properties that are in most need to support on world heritage matters. Such attention, for example, should logically be aimed towards those properties that have been on the list of world heritage in danger for a concerning length of time. Bringing together the relevant stakeholders to develop costed action plans is a simple yet effective approach. IUCN, for example, is willing to provide support through its strong secretary, member, and expert commission network across the African continent. For the joint ICROM IUCN, World Heritage Leadership Program offers a tangible entrance point on capacity building that could be tailored to the African context, and ICROM is also developing a new program in collaboration with the African World Heritage Fund aimed at building the capacity of African youth to better protect and benefit from their heritage. The committee has taken clear position on extractive industry and large-scale structure activities that are incompatible with world heritage status globally, such as oil and gas exploration and exploitation, mining, and the construction of dams with large reserves. It is also essential to ensure that any development outside the properties do not negatively impact on their outstanding universal value through rigorous heritage and or environmental impact assessment before the project are approved. Such independent assessment for project inside and when relevant outside World Heritage Site must take into consideration innovation alternative to identify the least damaging project option and ensure that sh such option do not negatively impact our sending universal value, including its integrity and its wider setting. Impact assessment should therefore also consider a no project option in those cases where damage to our sending universal value is clearly inacceptable. IUCN, in partnership with the World Heritage Center, other advisory bodies, and the International Association for Impact Assessment is developing enhanced guidance on heritage impact assessment, including providing better guidance on the increasing use of strategic environmental assessment. The advisory bodies individually and in partnership stand ready to give much needed priority to Africa. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to pass the floor to the distinguished delegation of Ghana. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. And since this is the first time that we take the floor, we wish to congratulate you on your election, as well as the host country for the organization of this session. 
Uh, Madam Chairperson, our delegation is of the view that this item adequately encapsulates the present challenge of African heritage. While recognizing the imperative to conserve and better manage the outstanding universal value of natural and cultural properties, we believe that conservation can be and should be done in a sustainable manner. The rich heritage of African countries is not only a matter of history, it is a living heritage which should address the present challenges and serve the local communities, providing social economic development as outlined in the three dimensions of sustainable development reported in the document. We therefore call for all stakeholders to consider, in tackling heritage conservation, member states' national development needs, which tap into the wealth of natural and cultural properties in a forward-looking manner. Like previous speakers, Ghana fully supports the amendments proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would uh, invite uh, Save Lamo to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is uh, Mohamed Asman from Lamu, Kenya, representing Save Lamu Organization, a grassroots coalition of diverse indigenous community which advocates for sustainable development. As you have acknowledged, one of the challenges Africa faces in the pursuit to, do, to modernize large development projects and rapid and unplanned urbanization can destroy rich cultural resources. Lamu is a key example of such a dilemma. We therefore welcome point six, which urge state parties and others not to permit extractive activities within world heritage properties. And point eight, which seeks to ensure that local communities benefit from development activities by including them in the decision-making process. Unfortunately, in Kenya, two projects violate these points and thereby jeopardize the Lamu World Heritage Site. These are the Lamu Port South Sudan Transport Corridor Project, called LAPSET, and the Lamu Coal Power Plant. While we understand that Kenya needs to develop legal, need to develop, legal due process must be followed. In landmark rulings, the High Court of Kenya in 2018 and uh, National Environmental Tribunal in 2019 ruled in our favor. These Kenyan courts found that the Lamu Port and Lamu Coal Plant projects are in violation of required environmental management processes. Already these projects have caused tangible ongoing damage from construction and rabbit unplanned urbanization. And this is just the beginning. The project is expected to add 29 more baths, an industrial city, an oil refinery, resource cities, and the 1,050 megawatt coal power plant. Political goodwill is determined by actions more than words. We are therefore glad that the World Heritage Committee has considered and acknowledged these realities and its draft decision. We urge the committee to maintain the draft decision to consider placing Lamo on the list of World Heritage Sites in danger and calls for the Kenyan government to review impact assessment of LAPSET and to halt the Lamo coal power plant. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. I would now pass the floor to the Deputy Director of the World Heritage Center for her comments. Thank you very much. Kenya? I am so sorry. It's very hard for us to see from here that uh, you have raised your plague. But I understand that the Distinguished Delegate of Kenya has requested the floor. Please, you have the floor. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kenya would like to take this opportunity to appreciate the warm welcome and hospitality by the people, the government of Azerbaijan. Kenya recommends this great initiative, which seeks to address the dichotomy between sustainable development and heritage protection. Africa indeed possesses a heritage of extraordinary natural reserves and resources, cultural diversity, indigenous and local knowledge and ecosystems. Kenya recognizes these strategic assets are key to sustainable development. To achieve the balance of socioeconomic development and the protection of OUV, of World Heritage Sites, we must increase investment in heritage research as an enabler of sustainable and economic development. Heritage is not only a historical learning tool for future generations, but is also a catalyst for socioeconomic development for the present generation. As countries develop to meet the basic human needs for their populations, 
and satisfy their basic needs, rights, by such initiatives as infrastructural developments, it's important to find mechanisms to support these endeavors. We call for the open-ended working group on the operational guidelines to look into exceptions for developing countries based on development indicators and for opportunities to be created and assistance provided as these countries need to undertake development processes to cater for their basic human rights and needs for their populations. Kenya, therefore, further calls for the collaborative and balanced efforts from the World Heritage Center, the advisory bodies, state parties, with inputs from research entities and other stakeholders in finding appropriate technologies and innovative solutions for sustainable development. In this regard, Kenya recognizes and calls for collaborative and balanced efforts in heritage conservation and sustainable development, especially between state parties, advisory bodies, World Heritage Center, among other stakeholders. Finally, Madam Chair, Kenya affirms its support to the World Heritage Convention and recognizes that the feature and credibility of the convention is in its integral ability to be a living heritage, protecting and developing sites in a manner relevant to both the present and future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, we would now pass the floor to the NGO that has uh, requested to speak. Please go ahead. Are you ready? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Thank you for giving me the floor uh, on behalf of the Jane Goodall Institute. We thank the World Heritage Committee for introducing this important topic and the World Heritage Center and advisory bodies for the report presented that is under analysis. In accordance to the mission of our organization, which aims to understand and protect chimpanzee, other apes, and their habitat through community-centered conservation, environmental education, and active involvement of youth, we would like to bring to the attention of this distinguished committee the urgent call for improved protection of great apes and their habitats launched by UNESCO DG last March during a special informative meeting for member states and experts in partnership with the French Museum of Natural History. Great apes are human closest living relatives facing serious threats. Their survival is essential for ethical and scientific reasons. And as umbrella species for protecting tropical forests where they thrive and essential to address climate change and provide crucial ecological services to the people, as was pointed out by EPVS 7 report. UNESCO has a unique position within the UN, UN system for the protection of great apes. Through 39 international designated areas in 23 countries, uh, well heritage, biosphere reserves, or both, 21 African countries and two uh, Asian countries for orangutans. There are four SDG directly or indirectly related to great apes. Goal 8, 12, 13, and 15. We respect, respectfully want to record the existence of the Great Tape Survival Partnership, GRASP, joined by UNESCO in 2002, uh, a partnership among state parties, UN bodies, and conservation organizations, highlighted by the METS declaration in the frame of the G7 meeting for ministers of the environment last month of May. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as we don't have any other proposals for intervention, 
I would like the Deputy Director of the World Heritage Center to make some notes and answers. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. I wanted to thank all of you for your extensive comments to both 5C and 5D. Um, we've taken careful note. Uh, your comments and responses underline the need to look for alternative solutions that integrate OUV protection with urgent socioeconomic needs of local communities. The idea is not to further antagonize these or to restrict the development aspirations of local communities or to diminish the immense value of World Heritage properties in Africa, but to really seek innovative solutions to integrate them both more. And we are here to support that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like just to add also towards all of our partners, uh, donor countries, especially the state parties, uh, the banking institutions, and also other NGOs who have contributed directly or indirectly to the safeguarding of culture and natural heritage in Africa. But just to reiterate our acknowledgement and our appreciation and thanks, and also just to publicly indicate how much difference it has been really bringing in the work that the center has been doing in the continent. And so thank you again really for the support that you will continue to offer through your various intervention you made today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have to move for the adoption, but before that I think that we have to give the floor to the rapporteur because we have amendments to be informed about. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We've received two sets of amendments, one from Angola and the United Republic of Tanzania, and the other one from Spain. Um, the first amendment is at paragraph three, which would now read, takes note of the African states' parties, um, unique biodiversity and richness, and their immense wealth of cultural heritage and local knowledge that have come down to humanity so far, and that must be conserved and passed on to future generations. The next paragraph with proposed amendments is paragraph five, and that would read, recognizes the specifically delicate, sorry, this is a new paragraph, recognizes the specifically delicate task of balancing world heritage and sustainable development by the least developed nations, notably of the African region, given that it is faced with a disproportionately higher level of poverty globally. There is a new proposed paragraph six also. Further recognizes the need to employ innovative and transformative solutions for reconciling world heritage and sustainable development that will take into account the nature, complexity, and specificity of socioeconomic constraints that these less developed countries continue to face. New paragraph seven. Takes note of the position paper on World Heritage and Sustainable Development in Africa, adopted in October 2018 by the African Union through resolution STCYC S3, MIN Report 67, as acknowledged in paragraph 20D of the document WHC 1943.com slash six, and requests the World Heritage Center in collaboration with the African World Heritage Fund to take into account its context with regard to implementation of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy. We, we then have an addition to the new paragraph eight, former paragraph five from Spain. The paragraph would now read, reiterates the need to integrate the protection of the outstanding universal value of world heritage properties with inclusive and sustainable development needs through the effective implementation of the World Heritage Sustainable Development Policy aligned with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The protection of the outstanding universal value should be assured by including the assessment of environmental impact in national and international development projects. Um, and I, the Secretariat would just like to um, request for consistency after should be to, uh, instead of using the words assured, use uh, furthermore ensured. 
if that's acceptable. And I think we have a little more amendment um, in our final paragraph. This is again from um, the um, amendment from Angola and Tanzania. Invites the Secretariat and advisory bodies in collaboration with African states parties to spearhead research into innovative solutions for sustainable development, providing measures at the operational level that guide and coordinate the efforts of the African states parties to the World Heritage Convention for the conservation of OUV in World Heritage properties, both cultural and natural, and their contribution to the sustainable development of local communities in particular, and also to establish a platform of good practices in integrating heritage conservation with sustainable development for African World Heritage properties. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Australia, you have the floor. Uh, th thank you, Chair. I just want to um, say that uh, it's very difficult for committee members to uh, make a decision on one of the amendments, and that is the amendment that would become uh, paragraph 7, um, takes note of the position paper on World Heritage and Sustainable Development in Africa adopted in October 2018 by the African Union and so on. The difficulty that many of us have who are not members of the African Union is that we have got no uh, visibility of this uh, resolution uh, and we are being asked to take a vote on something we know nothing about. Uh, so uh, I would just like to foreshadow that Australia will not be in a position uh, to, uh, to make uh, a vote uh, on that particular recommendation um, and it may be necessary uh, to adjourn debate on that particular item um, should we not be able to consider it substance. Thank you. Uh, Spain, please. Gracias, Presidente. Pues para apoyar la, la intervención de Australia, habíamos pedido la palabra precisamente para lo mismo y ante el desconocimiento de ese documento es por el cual hemos querido con la enmienda en el punto 8 nuevo eh, asegurar esta protección, porque siendo honestos con nosotros y con el resto del comité no podemos tomar nota de algo que no, que no conocemos y por eso estamos de acuerdo con lo que propone Australia. Thank you. Uh, Norway, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are in the same situation as uh, Australia and Spain. This is a document that we are not familiar with. I'm sorry. Thank you. Azerbaijan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just for the sake of, of, of the procedures and the clarity, may I ask you to proceed paragraph by paragraph in order to have uh, to start from the first paragraph and then we will come up to the uh, issue raised by the several delegations. So uh, I would appreciate if we will start uh, the, the discussions of the, this decision paragraph by paragraph. Thank you. Thank you for proposal. Uh, Hungary, please. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Chair. Hungary would like to join to uh, Australia and the other state parties saying Yes, the number seven, number seven, saying that we should wait for the document presented by Tanzania in order to make a, a clear and good decision. Thank you. Angola, please. Monsieur le Président, je, je me apporter quelques Chair, précisions par rapport like à ces points. Of, uh, Nous avons été approchés par l'Australie, la Hongrie uh, et d'autres pays, évidemment, uh, pour uh, rendre disponibles ces documents. Donc, à l'heure actuelle, je viens juste de recevoir so les courriers. En fait, les courriers ont été adressés à l'ADG Priorité Afrique. Priority Africa. Et relations extérieures. And le courrier a été signé le 25 juin is, uh, par l'Union africaine. Donc, officiellement, Union, le courrier a été adressé à l'UNESCO. 
depuis le 25 juin que la lettre a été signée. Donc nous avons accès à ces documents. Nous pouvons le partager avec ceux qui aimeraient prendre connaissance de ces documents. Comme ça, peut-être ce qu'on peut suggérer, si le membre qui souhaite prendre connaissance de ces documents aimerait le faire, on peut le rendre disponible. Comme ça, on pourra revenir sur l'approbation la, disons, des amendements que nous avons proposés, euh, peut-être euh, demain ou... Demain, oui, parce qu'on va leur donner le temps de, de, de regarder les documents et puis euh, de se prononcer. En tout cas, le document est disponible, donc on l'a reçu, on vient de le recevoir, la lettre a été signée, a été soumise à l'UNESCO. C'était l'élément supplémentaire que je voulais ajouter. Merci. So, uh, any other comments? Uh, there were two uh, proposals to the adoption of the whole text and with the amendments, and the other one is to go uh, point by point, so paragraph by paragraph. Uh, I think it will be better for us to uh, have everything to be discussed paragraph by paragraph, moving because some paragraphs are still uh, under the question. Uh, I have another question. Can uh, Angola's delegate provide the text uh, to be submitted today to all delegations? Okay, thank you. Now we'll start to uh, adopting, adopting the uh, text of the by uh, 33 com 5D by uh, paragraphs. So the World Heritage Committee, number one. Uh, no objections on point number one, having <laughs> examined document. Approve? Approve. Second, recalling decisions. No change. Approve. Number three. With the amendments proposed by uh, Republic of Tanzania and Angola. So uh, the, uh, the latest version. Can we accept it? No objections? Thank you. Number four. No any amendments and changes adopted. Thank you. Number five, new number five. So according to the new uh, amendments. Can we accept it in the version proposed by Angola and the Republic of Tanzania? You don't see any objections? I don't see also. Approved. Number six, again, the new version proposed by United Republic of Tanzania and Angola further recognizes. Members of committee, we can admit it. Thank you. Number seven, I would like to propose the following. We would apply to delegations of Angola and uh, Republic of Tanzania to submit today, until the end of the day, until of the working session, the full document to reconsider by the members of the committee. Uh, we will return only to the position seven, only to the position seven of this document tomorrow at the end of the day. If you don't mind, we will leave it like that. Can we accept it? Thank you for understanding. Thank you. Next, number seven or eight now we have it. Okay, it will be the question. So we will go like it is written here, so number eight. 
new version. No, it is not a new version. The old version, simply the number changed due to the uh, inclusion of the two additional uh, positions. No changes at all. Thank you. Next item, nine, new nine. Recall it's decision 37, com 7. No objections? Thank you. Number 10. Call upon the African states parties. Kuwait, Kuwait please. So the draft amendment submitted by Spain is approved because you said no change, but there is change. Spain submitted an addition for the environment and impact assessment. Sorry, sorry, it is my fault because I was following the documents in front of me of not locking there. So we accept number eight with the amendments proposed by Spain. Any objections? Thank you, Kuwait, for such. Norway, Norway please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we also support Spain's amendment, but we would suggest considering changing the terminology slightly to be uh, aligned with uh, UNESCO terminology with um, specific um, reference to heritage impact assessment, strategic environmental assessments, and so on. Um, and we also think it would be sensible to include a reference to the operational guidelines, uh, para 172. And, um, uh, I humbly request that some native uh, English speaker would help with the terminology to make this a good paragraph. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please, Rapporteur. Thank you. As I understand it, um, the distinguished delegate from Norway would like to refer in this paragraph both to paragraph 172 of the operational guidelines and to heritage impact assessments um, and strategic environmental impact assessments. Um, what I might suggest is given that we are also leaving paragraph, the new proposed paragraph seven for tomorrow, that the rapporteur um, will have a go at drafting that and we can look at it tomorrow. No objections? Kuwait, please. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> This is a major change in development uh, project, especially if you look from the practical point of view where you have some sites or some uh, culture interboundary between several countries where you have, if you're gonna do the impact, environment impact study in a country where you have the development, but it will affect other countries and there is no agreement, I think that might delay the, the project. So I think, um, it's still so in the yellow, I mean, in the gray area to have environmental, to have, I mean, environmental impact assessment for each project. I think this is, it will cause maybe problems in the implementation stage later on, especially with the projects will might affect several countries. That's my uh, point. I mean, I don't mind having, the, it's a great thing to have environmental impact assessment, but from the point of view of implementing it, it might have problems, I think. There are some decisions as far as no, I'm informed. Already existing. So, uh, if we will uh, take in consideration the proposal of uh, rapporteur to leave this wording uh, for tomorrow, along with the paragraph seven, which we decided to discuss tomorrow evening, so we will leave adoption of the, this paragraph also for tomorrow evening, along with the previous one. If you don't mind, we will leave it like that. Thank you. Number nine, we approved. Number 10, calls upon the African states, we approved. Uh, 11, further calls for African states. No changes, no amendments. Thank you, approved. 
12, calls upon all states parties to the World Heritage Convention. No changes. Thank you very much. 13, thanks to the state parties and partners. I don't see any objections. Thank you very much. Approved. Number 14. Uh, you have a comment, please. World Heritage Center. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, I just wanted to propose whether uh, you would like to consider uh, where it says invites the Secretariat and advisory bodies uh, to say in consultation with stakeholders rather than, which would include the African states parties, rather than only African states parties. So we could use the wording consult with stakeholders. So I just wanted to put that as a, and the rest of the, the amendment proposed. Thank you. Uh, uh, I would like to inquire the opinion of uh, Angola and Tanzania, if you don't mind such wording, because it is more reasonable from my point of view also, with the consultants of all the state bodies, not only uh, representing certain uh, geographical uh, units. Please, Angola. Bon, la, la phrase devient un peu, un peu ambiguë, mais je vais essayer d'aider quand même. En Let's fait, see, uh, on disait donc, invite les secrétariats et les organisations consultatives en collaboration avec les États parties africains et d'autres parties prenantes. Peut-être ça pourrait marcher. How do you think? I think we can, we can accept it, such kind of wording. So it's going with the new version. Please, Rapporteur, you can make the amendment. Uh, yes, so that paragraph would now read, invites the Secretariat and advisory bodies in collaboration with African states parties and other stakeholders to spearhead research. Thank you. No objections? So we can accept the paragraph 14 in new version. Thank you very much. So we cannot approve this document in whole until tomorrow evening. So uh, we will proceed to the discussion of this matter at the end of the day tomorrow before closing uh, our uh, afternoon uh, session. If you don't mind, we will proceed, but please uh, be sure, I would like to ask the uh, Secretariat to ensure that the text of uh, the paragraph which we uh, are going to discuss tomorrow will be submitted to all the uh, committee members. Thank you very much. Uh, so, now we are moving uh, to item 5E. Uh, it is the document um, 5E, as we notice. I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Rosler to introduce this item. Please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. This is the report of the World Heritage Center and the advisory bodies, item 5, and here 5E is the report on strengthening of dialogue between the advisory bodies and states' parties. So this is, will be presented by the advisory bodies. Thank you very much. Uh, Ikrom, the representative of Ikrom, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this uh, short presentation is going to be on document 5E, which is the report on strengthening of uh, dialogue between the advisory bodies and states' parties. 
Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, just by way of background, um, you have document 5E in your, in your document pack, but just by way of background, um, this report comes uh, specifically um, from, uh, from a request by, uh, by the committee last year um, as part of um, decision 42COM 5B to specifically request this agenda item on dialogue between the advisory bodies and states' parties. Um, having said that, it's useful to recall that uh, there have been um, uh, there have been a number of committee decisions over the years, especially recent years, let's say, uh, which do deal in one way or another with the strengthening and improving of dialogue uh, between the advisory bodies and states' parties. And you will note that in the document, uh, in the annex to this document, there is a list of those uh, of those decisions uh, which talk about dialogue. Next, uh, next slide, please. So uh, the question in preparing this short uh, this short paper, uh, the question was what uh, we asked ourselves: What is the scope uh, that is necessary to to have this uh, to, to be able to enhance this dialogue? Um, and um, I think the first you know the first uh, issue that, that came to our mind, or the first uh, the first idea that came to our mind, was that it's clear that uh, dialogue is most needed between the advisory bodies and states' parties. But at the same time, uh, the advisory bodies also recognized um, that there was a need for a, a greater dialogue, not just with, with states' parties, but with all stakeholders who are involved in the conservation of World Heritage properties in one way or another. Um, now, it's clear, uh, it's clear that the, the strongest, uh, let's say, the strongest desire for dialogue, the, the, the strongest request for dialogue, comes particularly in the nomination process and, of course, um, during reactive monitoring uh, process around, especially around reactive monitoring missions, but, but in preparing also state of conservation uh, reports for the committee. Um, but the other, I guess the other point that the advisory bodies uh, wanted to emphasize was that while those two areas, state of conservation and nominations, are the, are the places that the committee uh, has, has the largest request, let's say, for dialogue, but the fact of the matter is that this dialogue would probably be useful in all processes of the World Heritage Convention. So that would include tentative lists, uh, that would include the periodic reporting process, and even uh, let's call them smaller things like international assistance requests, if we could start a process of dialogue earlier on, um, I think that would probably be useful. And in fact, that's the other point to underline here, is that the advisory bodies are also uh, of the opinion um, that the sooner we can begin these dialogue processes, the better, the better that we are. That we often reach, uh, we, we, we often get into a situation where um, where decisions have already been taken, and then the idea is to move into dialogue, and it would be much easier to move into that dialogue phase and to exchange ideas before, uh, you know, before decisions are taken on the, on, on, on the ground. Um, so I think those are important, uh, important things to keep in mind. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. So, what are the principles that we that we tried to um, that we tried to highlight here? Um, the first is that dialogue is uh, most likely to be effective if there is clear communication and if there is mutual respect. So, it is important for um, all parties in a dialogue process um, to um, to be able to communicate as well as they possibly can with each other and do so in a in a, in a respectful manner. Um, having said that, we wanted to underline the point that dialogue is not. The concept of a dialogue is different from the concept of negotiation. That we we don't view dialogue as a point of sitting down uh, amongst two partners and and uh, or two parties, let's say, and and trying to negotiate an outcome. Instead, we view dialogue as a means of ensuring exchange, uh, exchange of information, as uh, as as a means of clarifying issues, as a means of bringing out new issues that maybe were not known in the past, as as a means of of exchange and clarifying of of, of information more so than uh, than specifically for negotiation. Um, and again, as, as I already uh, underlined to a certain extent, uh, dialogue uh, should actually play an important role in various processes uh, of, the, of the convention um, to, um, uh, to make sure that all the information is known, everyone is clear about the scope of that information and, um, and, um, uh, and, and how the processes are moving along and, the, and their timelines. Next, next slide, please. 
Um, so what are the subjects for dialogue? Um, we, we sort of divided this into two. Um, there's some aspects of dialogue would be more on processes themselves. So on the modalities of an evaluation or the modalities of the monitoring, monitoring procedures. So that's one, one subject for dialogue. And the second uh, area for dialogue uh, clearly is more related to uh, issues related to a specific site, um, which may be, uh, may, be, uh, may be raised during the evaluation, um, the evaluation mission or, or, the, or during the monitoring procedure. So, um, so there are two areas of dialogue, more, gen more general, let's say, and more specifically related to, to, to sites. Um, but having said that, um, it's important to uh, underline that, um, that, the, that the convention needs to maintain its technical credibility um, and it needs to ensure its consistency uh, amongst different properties. So, um, so this concept of dialogue is not something that should undermine, let's say, that consistency or that, con con that uh, credibility across multiple sites and across the, um, across the convention itself. And um, taking that one step further, that it's also clear that dialogue is not always going to resolve uh, an issue, especially one where there's a fundamental difference of opinion in relation to a scientific um, uh, a scientific issue related to the convention. So these are things that we need to keep in mind in understanding um, how you know how far dialogue can be effective. Next, uh, next slide, please. And this would be the last slide. So what is the way forward? Well, the way forward is that we need to start dialogue as soon as possible, and we need to do that for the nomination process and for the reactive monitoring process, but we also need to do that for all other processes uh, of the convention where there is a benefit to having a, a consultation at an earlier stage. Um, that it is important to recognize also that um, time is an issue in relation to dialogue. Um, that the, the advisory bodies, I think I can say, are, are, are um, very much interested in promoting dialogue and having better dialogue with um, with committee members and with states parties in general. Um, but it, it is important for us to, to take into account that when you enter into a dialogue, it's something that has a tendency to take more time. And so we have to look at the processes of the of the convention themselves, look at the timelines of the convention uh, itself to see uh, how we can insert this dialogue in a way um, that that it, it, it's able to it's able to to function in a in, in a positive way because if there's not enough time, it it becomes difficult to actually have that meaning having that meaningful dialogue. Um, it is also important to point out that um, uh, that the the issue of dialogue uh, can create more opportunities for capacity building. Part of uh, part of the issue of, of 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 dialogue is, especially when you're not dealing just with a single site, but when you're dealing in, in the larger sense, um, can be accomplished through capacity building and through exchange of ideas um, in in a variety of venues, um, uh, which can help states parties to better understand the convention, which can help the advisory bodies to better understand the points of view of the states parties in relation to certain issues, and that can be done in a capacity building framework, and it's something that we can you know we can work on to we can work on together between the states parties and the, um, uh, and, and the advisory bodies. And finally, uh, last point is just to say that we're looking uh, for innovative ideas to be explored, to look at the most effective ways to promote dialogue, uh, and that it's important that as we continue to promote these ideas of dialogue, that we, that we um, carry them out on a trial basis first to ensure that they are actually efficient and that they actually work, and also to make sure that they don't uh, create any, uh, any sort of unintended negative consequences um, uh, for, the, for the procedures of the World Heritage Convention. Um, so I think, um, I think those are the, the, the key ways forward. I think just to conclude, I think it's useful to point out that there have been a lot of steps toward toward the uh, improvement of dialogue between the advisory bodies and states parties uh, and committee members over over time um, certainly within the uh, certainly within the nomination process within the evaluation process there has been added steps to allow for that kind of dialogue between states parties and the advisory bodies in question um, I think certainly in uh, reactive monitoring um, there has there has been more of, a, of an attempt uh, to have better dialogue but even also in other forms like the ad hoc working group uh, in in other working groups that, that come out I think that also promotes promotes dialogue so 
uh, hopefully uh, we can move forward with this and we can, we can find new and innovative ways uh, to, to continue to promote this dialogue, uh, this dialogue over time. I will, I'll stop the presentation here because the point of this was actually just to sort of get people to start thinking about it because the idea of dialogue is actually a two-way street. So it shouldn't be me s preaching to you what is dialogue. It should be me just sort of opening this as, a, as a, an agenda item and then actually we can start having a dialogue. And for that reason, I'm actually also happy to say that uh, IUCN and, and ECOMOS are, are right next to me. And I think all three of us, uh, as well as the World Heritage Center, will be happy to have this dialogue with you even now in this venue. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we have two options, either to go further with our work, but I think it is a little bit late to start discussion. Uh, we can uh, propose that now we will put the name, uh, the list of those who want to make comments to this uh, presentation and uh, do it tomorrow, start this matter tomorrow morning. Uh, the other way, if you will wish, we can go further. We have Australia, Norway, Tanzania, Indonesia, Bahrain, Brazil, Hungary, Azerbaijan, Guatemala, Kuwait, Tunisia, Brazil, I said. So we have 11 uh, interventions. Mm. I think that we must not uh, possess our agreement concerning that we try to finish the work at 6 o'clock. We are not at the stage which urges us to uh, do it today, on the first day of our working session. Uh, we would like to propose to move the discussion uh, and exchange of the opinions on this item for tomorrow morning session at uh, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that we will finalize it soon, within half an hour, and then we will move to the next item. Mm -hmm. Noting that the decision on the two items on the 5D will be done at the end of the day, not in the morning. Can you agree? Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, I think that we had very productive uh, and fruitful discussion today. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Rosler to some uh, information. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I hope uh, you will see on the screens there is a site event, which is from 6 to 7, Thematic Studies for Natural Heritage, an update by IUCN, which is in the AB space, uh, which is room P3. And then we have a number of exp exhibitions, which you can see here on the screen, um, which you are welcome to visit. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. And I would like to apply to all the participants. Uh, you all have in your bags a Baku cultural guide. Uh, I would like you to look it through it and find the entertainments, concerts, exhibitions uh, which you are interested in. You are mostly welcome there. Uh, your badges, uh, I hope, will be the pass to these events. So welcome. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow, 10 o'clock. We will start 10, not later. Please. Bureau. Sorry, bureau, bureau is 9.30, but working of the session is 10 o'clock. Thank you. Have a nice evening.